I'm just want to make sure that I'm not representing either the uh, graduate institute because I'm just studying master there, nor the uh, Ministry of Health of Egypt uh, because I'm working as a consultant with them. I don't represent them. Uh, but my experience um, with them is, uh, has been something that I want to share uh, with you. And uh, it's actually a personal story uh, and it means a lot to me. And uh, I'd like to first ask you a question. Have you ever been assigned for a task, mandate, got to work on something as a consultant, employee, and you never knew what to do? Raise your hand if you've ever been once. Okay, I did. <laughs> and how it went, like you continue like this or uh, bit by bit you got to learn and uh, you became uh, more knowing what you're doing. Yeah, and um, do you see it as something as an epidemic in a certain industry or something like this? Or it's just a single case that is isolated to your profession or so? Uh, well, the story here that um, in 2014, I was so motivated to, uh, to go to the World Health Assembly. It just happened that I, I went through a very interesting a channel to uh, be the youth delegate of Egypt. It was the first of its time. It was only the UN uh, General Assembly that is having youth delegates. I went to WHA in 2014. Uh, and this was, this was a very eye-opening experience to me. Uh, it was pretty interesting, but I had no clue of what I'm doing. I was super excited of every single thing I'm doing. Uh, but it was quite frustrating on a daily basis. 14 days, or I don't know what, like two weeks almost. I'm not feeling fulfilled. Uh, I got tasked to, uh, to attend one of the negotiations. Uh, it was something very exclusive, but then I was just asked to do some notes. And then I came back to the notes to the health attaché or the diplomat that was supervising me. He was never happy, like he didn't like any of it. It, was, it wasn't useful, but he was a great mentor. He, uh, he was honest. Uh, he's been doing this for three years and a half. It was the end of his term as a diplomat in Geneva. Uh, he taught me a lot, and then this taught me one lesson. Global health diplomacy or the practice of specifically diplomacy in multilateral settings, because I'm not exposed to other types of diplomacy, doesn't, you don't learn it in a school, you learn it by practice and for the specific mission that you're doing. Uh, speaking of that, coming from um, diplomacy background, you've been a diplomat, you've been uh, working in the embassy in one of the countries, you've been working as a diplomat, you came to Geneva, you work on a specialized agency in the UN uh, representing the stance of your country. If you've never worked in health before, you're lost. You know how to diplomacy, you know how to build relationships, you know how process goes like, uh, I don't know, be it World Health Assembly, Executive Board, Human Rights Council, session. Um, but you don't know about health, you don't know about the specific topic of the, of that you're going to speak about. If you are coming from the Ministry of Health, you've mostly studied medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, nursing, you've never studied political sciences, and you've never, might be that you've never been to a multilateral setting or a conference um, at this before. So you go to Geneva, you feel that you're going to change the world, or New York, but you end up feeling it's boring and you go shopping. Uh, so, the challenge is a bit complicated. Uh, I always had it in mind. I had it in mind on a personal level, but as well as a kind of a con conceptual thing to think of uh, how to solve it, how, to, how it could be better. Uh, after I did medicine, I went to study global health. And then one of the courses I was very keen to, uh, to know about was global health diplomacy. And it wasn't much in my program, it wasn't super much, but it was good. But at least there was something. But I didn't, I didn't find answers to most of the questions I had myself, and I found that uh, the problem is not about people like me to learn, it's the people that work on this field. Um, it's not about the people who are still learning and going into uh, early career professionals or getting in entry-level jobs uh, or consultancies, it's people who already work there. 
there is a problem. Uh, and this problem is somehow linked more to, uh, I wouldn't say developing countries, but countries with limited resources, and specifically in education and training, capacity building of their staff. Uh, so, in the World Health Assembly, it's very easy that you can see the delegation of the United States. Some, like in 2014 or 15, it was 61 persons, sometimes 50, I don't know, it's very big. And a lot of them are very knowledgeable, they would get professors, they would get businesses in their like, delegation, they would consult people, etc. And others would be two persons and uh, following on a lot of files. Missions in Geneva, uh, like the permanent missions or the embassies in Geneva, they have the same thing. Uh, it's a very scattered. So what I decided to think of is while I'm doing my master's thesis uh, is to address this topic. And then before I said what I'm going to do, I said how I'm going to do it. Uh, and then I thought of this idea which is used in entrepreneurship uh, is about uh, design thinking. If you're developing an educational tool or you want to do an app, think of your client first. Ask him, huh, what do you want? Put yourself in their shoes and then you can go for prototype and then go across it. Then this is what I end up doing in my master's thesis. It was to develop an uh, adapt adaptable educational tool but the target of it was not uh, to have it something solid, it's just to have a prototype that can be given to a client or given to an institution and ask them how this would fit with your needs if you want something like this. And this was it, it was very like first built on the concept of what global health diplomacy is, uh, tips on the practice in uh, national level, bilateral settings and multilateral settings. And uh, it was, uh, mostly skill-based and <coughs> simulation-based. Then it come to um, testing it or come to, uh, to, to have it executed. So I was, I was able to get my master thesis without implementing it, just to, to describe what it is. But then I said, let's take it a step further. Uh, I tried it in uh, Copenhagen School of Global Health. They didn't have uh, healthy diplomacy in their, uh, in their profile of studies, either in the summer school they have or in, the, um, uh, or in their master programs. So with it, it was very, uh, it was very um, appreciated. And then the Ministry of Health, they asked it to do it, but for specific things, on policy writing, in, uh, in having this to, um, uh, policy analysis, position building. So they had no problem in going to Geneva, but they had problem in building the position in Cairo. And then now it's going to be taught in, uh, in University of Geneva Masters. Uh, but then what I want to share here is not the program, because the program I can send it to you and you can read it. Uh, it's really to take the education and capacity building and training about global health governance and diplomacy. Uh, beyond from the picture, it's for the big guys. It's for diplomats. It's for senior level management in, uh, in the ministries of health or so. Uh, young people, uh, young employees are the ones who write most of the stuff, are the ones who are doing the analysis, read documents. They need to know what they are doing this for and see what is the reality. In the Ministry of Health, like I did simulation uh, for the guys that never travel to the Geneva and will never travel. But it was useful for them to know what they are working for. This was sh this thing, show don't tell. Simulation helped them see the reality themselves. Last thing is treat them as customers, and customers are always right. It's an Egyptian thing. I think it's uh, everywhere. Uh, but it's true. Like with the Ministry of Health, they said we want some stuff in Arabic. It was so super difficult to do it. Uh, we, wa we don't want uh, some generic talks. We want something about writing. We want something very specific. And uh, it was very difficult to, it was more difficult to understand what they want more than to deliver the work workshop itself or the training itself. It took about six months to, to deliver it or to do it because it has a mentorship uh, element in it. And it ended up very well. I just received my certificate of experience and so on. And then it was very impressive how they appreciate it and how they got it. Well, thank you. In Egypt, mm. uh, do you find with, with all these 
changes um, that the country has gone through in the last 10 years. You know, the Tower Square and, and the different factions for Mubarak and Morsi and all that. Uh, do you find that um, the health system or health initiatives in Egypt can be affected by that? And that uh, maybe some areas or populations might get better health care or more funding? Or has the health system uh, risen above that? And is there a role for diplomacy there? It was very impacted in a positive and a negative way. In a negative way, funding decreased because uh, we had like bad economic situation. But the good thing is, on the policy level, it was tremendous to see how change uh, went. Uh, like in a, in a very good way. This is because health has been very uh, underrated on the politics. Nobody cares in Egypt what happens in, in health. They just care about who's getting elected, who have said what about the president or something like this. So this underrating uh, of health made things go fast. On the health diplomacy at the national level, I would say, if we can say this, uh, the uh, universal health coverage law was something very difficult. It needed a lot of... Uh, talks with the parliament, a lot of talks with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Health, uh, cooperation with a lot of organizations, on top of them is WHO, and uh, now it passed and we're going to do it. Same for HCV, it was uh, very like the peak for that, for Egypt work was 2014, shortly after the, um, the, uh, the political situation getting that in that shape. So it's getting very, very well. The change of the government structure uh, in the Ministry of Health, I don't know about all of them, I just exposed to the Ministry of Health, is, is, is growing. Uh, like the department I'm, I'm working now for, it used to be three persons, and all of them were uh, old uh, and very experienced, but just three. Now 17 young people very eager to learn, hungry. They want to learn, they want to do something, they want to deliver, and they are trying to invest in them. So it could be better.